All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. There you go. I love the energy on this beautiful morning, right? Well, I'm Jesus Garza. I'm the city manager here in Victoria, and I have the honor of uh, serving as your MC. I want to thank you, first of all, for being here as we celebrate a tremendous step forward for our public safety services here in Victoria and for our amazing first responders, who I'm sure we can all agree certainly deserve a state-of-the-art facility. And so congratulations to you all right off the bat. I'd like to also take a moment to recognize some of the elected officials that, are, that have joined us this morning. Um, I apologize if I missed some, but um, uh, I, I, I believe State Rep. Jeannie Morrison is here with us this morning. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, Jill Fox, representing State Senator Colcourse, is here. Thank you, Jill, for being here. I believe our DA, Constant Philly Johnson, is here. Thank you for being here as well. And I'm sorry if I missed some of the others. Uh, and I'm, com I'm coming to council. I'm not, for I'm, not, I'm not forgetting about you. Uh, because I do want to spend uh, a minute uh, acknowledging um, our mayor and our city council, um, as well as our former mayor, Bach Knight, who's joining us this morning. Uh, because certainly, without your support over the course of the last seven years, uh, we wouldn't be here today. And so thank you, council members Mark Lofgren, Josephine Solis, Jan Scott, Dr. Andrew Young, uh, where are the others? Ricky De La Garza, thank you, Mayor of Tortilla Flats, thank you uh, so much. Um, of course, our Mayor Dwayne Crocker, who has served wonderfully for 15 hours as mayor, thank you for being here. In a row. In a row, that's right, that's right. But, but seriously, thank you. Um, as, you know, city manager, uh, it's an amazing feeling to feel supported by the elected officials, especially when it comes to such large projects like these. And so thank you for that. Throughout the course of this short program, you're going to learn a little bit more about the project, hear from some of our chiefs. Um, and so I don't want to take too much of their thunder, but I do want to spend a few minutes talking about how we got to today. Because as I alluded to, it has been a multi-year effort. Uh, you may or may not be aware of this, um, but our staff has been aware of the needs of our police department and public safety for quite some time. And as a matter of fact, at least from a formal standpoint, this first began back in 2017 timeframe uh, when the city of Victoria hired Dewberry Architects to look at a master plan facility study for the police department. That study was completed in 2018 and shortly after, the city embarked on a journey to implement uh, that recommendation. However, that particular study uh, did not take into account, including municipal court, it did not take into account what to do with the existing building, right? It, it, it was adequate, but perhaps needed some fine tuning. And so in 2021, uh, we went ahead and hired um, FGMA architects and Brian Mead, who you're here from today, and if you're thinking, well, those are two different companies, why would you do that? Uh, well, because we focused on, on hiring the architect and Brian Mead shifted from working with Dewberry to FGMA. And so uh, we wanted to focus in on Brian. I'm, I know he's very, very excited. But in any case, the recommendation and the plan that was completed in 2021 recommended what we're here all to celebrate today, which, was, which is a state-of-the-art facility, over 70,000 square feet, that will house our primarily police department, but also house fire administration, as well as our municipal court. Uh, and by far, and I'm biased, but I think this plan is way better uh, than the plan that was completed back in 2018, because not only is it more inclusive of, of our personnel, but quite frankly, uh, is in a better location as well. Um, the original location was scheduled to be somewhere else where ultimately we deemed it was more appropriate for it to be residential. And I believe this site definitely works better with its proximity to downtown and all the efforts that we're embarking on downtown, as well as some easy access to some of our thoroughfares. And so we're very, very excited for the location. But anyway, I don't wanna speak for an hour because I can't, but I do wanna thank a couple of folks and I hope they're here, but I want to specifically thank Gilbert Reyna, who's our CFO and I'm whoa there. Uh, and I hope he's here, is he here? Okay, well, regardless, 
Uh, Gilbert Reyna deserves a lot of credit for why we're here today. He's been our CFO or, or finance director for over 30 years, rough at 30 years. And he recognized that this was a priority from day one. We quite frankly wouldn't be here today if it weren't for his creative debt management recommendations that have created the debt capacity in order to be here today. We certainly wouldn't be here today without his creative thinking on how to facilitate funding when we thought maybe this project was just getting out of hand. Um, the total project cost for this construction is roughly 47 million. When we started this journey three years ago, it was like 33. Uh, and so we could have very easily found any excuse to just give up, uh, and we didn't. And thanks to Gilbert's leadership, we were able to find uh, creative ways to, to finance and, and make this project happen. And so the Gilbert, thank you for that. I also want to thank uh, Assistant City Manager Derek Farrell. Uh, you may or may not be aware of how we're structured at the city, but both of my assistant city managers have special projects assigned to them, and this particular project has been an uh, assignment uh, that Darryl, Derek, sorry Derek, uh, <laughs> has uh, undertaken from day one. Uh, and so Derek, thank you so much for your leadership uh, in this effort. I also want to thank the chiefs, uh, not only our existing chiefs, but Chief Craig, Chief Arredondo, Chief Fox, of course Chief Young, and Chief Gomez, who is also doing great within his first month uh, on the job, uh, because without their leadership, we also wouldn't have the facility that we have. Deputy Chief Jamison, who's now retired, also played a huge role in that, as well as the other deputy chiefs. Uh, but I want to thank them for their dedication, because again, everybody recognizes how important this is, and we would not be here today if it weren't for that collaborative effort. So thank you all so much. Now, most importantly, our employees, our first responders, right, uh, are certainly very excited about it. I've had a chance to talk to speak to some to speak to some of them. And I know they're very excited and I'm excited for them. And so thank you all so much for being here, for your service, and I hope uh, this facility makes you proud. So with that, I will stop talking and I will uh, turn it over to our 16 hour mayor, uh, Mayor Dwayne Crocker. <laughs> So thank you all for being here today. Uh, this marks a significant milestone in our community's commitment to public safety, justice, and the rule of law. Uh, this construction project will be the largest building infrastructure project in the city's history, and I'm proud to be here uh, to celebrate and acknowledge this moment with each of you. Uh, today we embark on a journey uh, that will enhance the safety and security of our city for generations to come. This state-of-the-art facility will serve as a cornerstone of our efforts to protect and serve our citizens. It will provide our dedicated first responders with the resources needed to carry out their vital duties, ensuring swift responses to emergencies, proactive measures to prevent crime, and educational programs to teach our community about safety. The construction of this headquarters represents our unwavering dedication to the well-being of our community and to our first responders. With the inclusion of our municipal court facilities, we're also providing a place where disputes are resolved, where rights are protected, and accountability is upheld with integrity and efficiency in keeping with our community's principles of justice and equality. I want to echo uh, City Manager Garza's uh, thanks to all those who have been involved. The list is too long, but uh, uh, thanks to everyone who made this day possible. In closing, and I know y'all are glad to hear we're closing, or that I'm closing. I think. Only him. We got like 10 more people. Yeah. That's why they said, look, you got this long, dude. So uh, I think it's only fitting that we acknowledge the sacrifices made by those who serve our community on the front lines of public safety. Today, we honor their commitment by ensuring that they have the tools and infrastructure necessary to fulfill their mission. Together, through this transfer transformative project, we're building a safer and stronger future for everyone who calls Victoria home. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I, know, I now want to ask our police chief, Young, to come up and say a few words. Well, they, they took all my speech. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, good morning, everyone. And as I look around the smiling faces today, I can, can confidently say that this is an exciting day. This new building replacing our current 1966 error structure 
represents the long needed progress and growth for our police department and city. Our existing facility was designed for a staff of 50 and today we have over 160 police department personnel. Once this project is complete, the entire department will be under one roof, making us more accessible and collaborative as we serve the public. I'm especially thrilled that our dispatchers, the lifeline between the community and the officers, will now be directly connected to the rest of us gathering to the rest of us rather than in a separate building, further streamlining our emergency response capabilities. I sincerely thank the city leadership for recognizing the need for this new police safety headquarters, the public safety headquarters, and having the vision for the future. Thank you for sharing this special day with all of us. Thank you. If only I can be that to sink. Yeah, if only. Uh, you got it. Now I want to invite uh, Chief Gomez, or Fire Chief, to come up and say a few words. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is George Gomez. I'm the new fire chief for Victoria Fire. Uh, I've been here uh, 21 days, and uh, and, I, and I'm loving it. So uh, it's been a, it's a pleasure to be here with you all today and show, uh, to share the joy and excitement uh, with this building. Uh, ever since I began learning and researching on Victoria, the city of Victoria, in hopes of becoming the fire chief, I was really impressed with the fire department. Uh, their pride, their passion, uh, their standard of care is second to none. Uh, you, and it's displayed, they are the gold standard for CPR care. Uh, they are pro uh, progressive with the uh, blood transfusion program. Um, as Victoria continues to grow, it is important that we have the resources to share and be able to continue providing this high level of care uh, for the, the community. Uh, we are fortunate that our city leaders recognize this and uh, they've demonstrated that uh, public safety is priority and um, they, uh, you know, with the renovation of Station 1 and now with this building. Uh, this building will house uh, the fire administ administration which will greatly help us support our fire stations as well as our members out in the field. Uh, it will help improve our coordination and communication with other public safety agencies. And uh, I hope that you are as excited as I am, you know, to have this as part of the next chapter for uh, Victoria's Public Safety Services. And uh, most importantly, Victoria Fire uh, will have its prized possession to share with the community as an antique fire engine in the lobby for all to see uh, when they come and visit this beautiful building. Thank you. Hey Chief, it's not our fault y'all didn't maintain a historic police vehicle. Right? It's, not, it's not our fault. It's not our fault. Uh, I, I now want to ask our Municipal Court Judge Heinold to come up and say a few words as well. shouldn't give an open mic to a judge, but <laughs> I warned you, no. Um, I'm so happy to be a part of this historic year for the city of Victoria, and I'm also so pleased by the commitment that has been shown to our citizens, uh, by our city council, uh, by Jesus Garza, and our other stakeholders. We will now have a dedicated courtroom, this is huge, um, with a dedicated entrance um, for our citizens where we will continue in our efforts to increase access to justice and fairness to all. In addition, we anticipate having a city transit stop right here to accommodate ease of access for our community. I'm very excited about that. And this beautiful new space will not only allow for growth and expansion of services, but it will also allow for more efficiency and productivity for our great city, but also our extraordinary municipal court staff members. This really is an exciting time to be part of the city of Victoria, and I can't wait to welcome all of you uh, to our new space, maybe in different ways, maybe not tickets, but anyway. Um, Thank you for, uh, for all the commitment that you've shown and um, making this possible for our community. I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for as much as we're, we're, we've been talking about the need for this facility, uh, we can only do so much, 
you know we're not architects we're not engineers you know we're not construction managers and so the next few people you will hear from are, are really the people that are going to really make this happen um, and it all of course begins with uh, a design and so I first want to ask Brian Mead to come up who is the vice president with FGMA Architects and as I mentioned has been involved with this project dating back to 2017 when he was with a different firm which I should probably not name uh, <laughs> But he's been intimately involved with the project for several years, and I know he's excited. So, Brian? All right. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, everyone. Uh, seven years has gone by very, very fast, and it has been an honor and a privilege to lead various teams on two different programs and multiple site test fits, as Jesus has mentioned here in the city of Victoria. Once this site was finally chosen, our team got to work over 15 months ago to kick off the formal design process. Just before Christmas of 2022, we held a fun, engaging design workshop, some of you might remember, where it was suggested to use some of the downtown beautiful historic buildings, such as the 1895 O'Connor Proctor Building, as inspiration for this new building, which you see the rendering behind us. So on behalf of the entire design team, because it truly does take a village, I would like to thank the city of Victoria for entrusting us to plan and design this exciting new public safety headquarters. As has been already said today, this new facility will bring together police, dispatch, fire administration, and municipal courts finally into a single efficient purpose-built structure with a focus on safety, security, wellness, and many community services, including shared meeting rooms and exhibit spaces throughout. To City Manager Garza, to Assistant City Manager Farrell, and too many names to, to name here, to police, fire, courts, all the many user groups, thank you so much for your countless hours over the last 15 months you've spent with our team helping to define the vision for your new facility. From FGM Architects, I would also like to recognize a few key members here today. Project architect Susan Barr, project manager James Lindsay, uh, principal in charge Jaime Palomo, thank you all for your leadership and dedication to this project. And also from our local associate architect, RMA, thank you as well, Patrick Orr and Billy Berger for your project contributions and upcoming project uh, construction administration support. Finally, a special thank you to all the other many consultants involved in this. Um, as well as owners rep AGCM and construction manager Spa Glass, who will very soon bring this vision to life. Before we know it, we will be back here to dedicate this new facility, which will proudly stand here on Main Street for decades to come as a shining beacon of Victoria's municipal services. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. And as Brian alluded to, uh, it will be up to Spa Glass to make this happen. And so I'd li like to invite Jonathan Bradley, who serves as operations manager for the project. Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, good morning. I'm Jonathan Bradley. I'm the operations manager of Spall Glass. Today marks a historic moment as we gather to celebrate the groundbreaking of the new City of Victoria Public Safety Headquarters. This project represents a commitment to safety and the well-being of the community. It is a testament to the shared vision for a secure and thriving future. In constructing this state-of-the-art facility, the City of Victoria is investing in the, in the backbone of the city's safety infrastructure. The headquarters will serve as a beacon of protection embodying dedication of first responders who work tireless, tirelessly to keep us safe each day. As we turn soil and commence the construction of this essential hub, let us reflect on the collective effort that has brought us here today. It's a collaboration between government, between law enforcement, between fire administration, between municipal courts, and, and the community. And it's a demonstration to what can be achieved when we work together towards a common goal. The building will not only be housed the latest technology and resources for police and emergency services, but it will stand as a symbol of unity and resilience. It's a commitment to fostering a safer environment for generations to come. I want to extend my gratitude as well to all that have contributed to making this project a reality, 
to our owner, to the city of Victoria, to the owner's representative, to AGCM, to the project architect and their consultants, FGM, and to our small glass team and the many, many community members who have supported this initiative. Together, we're laying a foundation for a safer and more secure city of Victoria. As we embark on the journey, let us keep in mind the impact that this public safety will have on the lives of our residents, and may it stand as evidence to unwavering commitment to ensuring the well-being and prosperity to all that call this city home. Small Glass takes pride in, be pride in being a community builder, and we want to thank you for all you do to help build our community. Let the construction begin. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for being here. And lastly, I want to invite uh, Marty Smith, who is the president of AGCM. And I think it's fitting that he's speaking, speaking uh, he's the last guest speaker for today, because ultimately, no pressure, AGCM is going to help us make sure that this happens within budget, on time, they do it right. So they'll be holding these folks' feet to the fire. And so we're excited that, that you're joining this effort. So Marty? Great. No pressure. No, no pressure. pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Well, good morning, howdy. Um, you know, fortunately, being the uh, the second to last, like I told you, we're I'm the eighth. Okay, so we're getting there. We're getting to the end. Um, you know, we also know the fun's about to start because we're all about to get to throw some dirt on each other. So we know we're getting to the end. Um, but I just want to say a few words. You know, groundbreaking is not just about the celebration of start of construction, but it's also an opportunity to take the time to think about and reflect where we've come. You know, with all of the collaboration and all the parties in in, in place that made this happen. Um, it's a huge team effort and it just kind of proof in the pudding that if, if you truly apply yourself to something and you have goals they're able to achieve them right so being part of something like this with the, the size and the magnitude of this project um, for us at AGCM it's, it's extremely humbling and, and it's a, such an honor to be part of it so uh, for us at AGCM uh, we just wanted to thank everyone that's been involved in this from such a bold vision to coming to bring this to reality um, and you know, just with the, the craziness in the world today, um, to be part of something today and for you all to be building something that's going to be making everyone safer, stronger, and bringing the community together is huge for the city of Victoria. So again, I just want to thank you all very much for giving AGCM the opportunity to be part of this project. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I did say he was the last guest speaker. Uh, <laughs> because I'm also doing the closing remarks. That's another 20 minutes. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, thank you all again so much for being here. I do, one of the, I, I do want to leave you with just what happens next and what you can expect to see here in the near future. Uh, as we've alluded to, this project will commence uh, here shortly, and we anticipate it being completed in August of 2025. And we know that construction projects always get completed on time. <laughs> And so I fully anticipate that everybody will be moved in, you know, in August. Uh, I'm just kidding. But the project is scheduled to be completed in August of 2025, and I know that our personnel are excited to move into the facility, you know, in that fall of 2025, and so we're excited for that. One of the questions that we've been getting uh, quite frequently since announcing this, and you might be thinking it yourself, is what happens to the existing building that our police department and municipal court are currently in. And the plan for that, we don't have a timeline for it, but the plan for that is to renovate those spaces so that we can create adequate state-of-the-art space as well as room for growth for some of our administrative departments that are currently housed in 700 Main. And currently at the City Hall Complex, which is where the police department is, your only true administrative type of or oversight management departments that are there our city secretary's office, city attorney's office, and city manager's office. And so we look forward to the renovations of that facility so that we can bring back to City Hall our finance department, communication and public affairs, our HR department. And we also envision renovating our council chambers so that we too can have a space that's specifically designed for council chambers so that we can continue to conduct the business that, uh, that everybody wants us to do in a state-of-the-art and safe facility. And so that's, that's to come. And again, Thank you, Mayor, Mayors, City Council members, for all your support. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. And especially thank you to our first responders who, without your day in, day out sacrifices, we certainly wouldn't have 
the ability to even be here today. And so thank you again, and that's where I want to leave it. Thank you to our first responders. Congratulations. You deserve a state-of-the-art facility, and I hope you're excited. So thank you all so much again. This concludes this element of our groundbreaking ceremony. We will now transition to the fun part, which apparently we're throwing dirt on each other. And so I do want to ask, of course, our mayors and our council members and the speakers to please uh, make your way over here to Lauren and Ashley so you can get your shovel and hard hats. Don't turn it over yet. Yeah, look this way. 